Welcome to Cedar Hill Country Market. Today I'm going to be making some more home decor. <clears throat> We've gotten a request for a sign um, with bees on it. So I'm going to video um, the assembly of our sign here. So you can it can inspire you to have your own ideas. Or if you'd like to purchase this sign, you can do so on our website at cedarhillcountrymarket.com. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out the layout the way that I want to do it. Um, this, these are, um, I'm going to do a combination of, of some paint, hand painting and decoupage and maybe a collage. Um, this might even be mixed media. I don't know yet. But I was trying to get a layout done for what I'd like to do. We'll put these aside. And we can change our mind as we go along. But for now, we have to get a base. And I'm just using a 12 by 12 uh, canvas. This has been pre-treated. Uh, it's ready to go. <clears throat> so uh, for our base of our sign, I'm going to use... Um, We're going to use this multi-surface uh, folk art, and this is called Moon Yellow. I'm going to mix uh, this Moon Yellow with some white to kind of try to tone it down a little bit. And I may add some of this Canary Yellow to it to see if I can get the yellow that I really want for this background. Um, in the bees that I've selected, there are many shades of yellow going on here. And bees are typically an orangey yellow, not a blue yellow. And if you're used to working with color, a color wheel, you'll understand that. Um, <clears throat> whites, yellows, blues, reds, most colors have undertones of either going orange or blue. So... Um, we're going to make sure this one goes a little bit more uh, orangey. So, and most people don't, but I like to paint my sides. I can do that at the very end once this is all dry. Or I can do it while I'm painting. I uh, We'll see how that goes. So, shake the paint up really well to get the pigment uh, Make sure it's all mixed up together in here. And then we're going to take a little bit of white. And you can see this is pretty orangey. But I'm going to take a little white and just see if I can get the tones that I want. And uh, mixing paints is kind of fun because it'll always, you know, change your... Uh, color just a little bit. I'm just wanting to get this kind of toned down, maybe not so stark. And we'll start in the middle and paint our way out because I really want the, around the edges to be a little bit darker than the middle. And we're going to do some really neat uh, finishes on this paint. So Um, we, we're hoping that this customer likes this so much they'll come back for uh, another one in, in sequence. We'll do another one, and if she likes this one, maybe she'll buy a sequence. When you're selling home decor or anything, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're able to do upsells on things. Uh, it really helps your business to be able to offer you know, if they really like this, then certainly you want to add something to it. Uh, maybe a frame, maybe uh, put this on a wood block, all kinds of things that you can do to upsell to increase uh, your sales. So if you're a business owner, that's just a little tidbit there. Um, okay, so we're going to start painting and I'm not using any medium with this at all. Um, It's going to glide on pretty well, 
And I may only do one coat because I'm going to do some other uh, paints in here as well just to give this just a really good visual. Lots of kitchens uh, have yellows in them. I remember in the 70s, if anybody remembers that far back. Uh, in the 70s, kitchens were either avocado or yellow and brown. Those were your choices, basically. And everything seemed to have a sunflower on it. And um, that's not as popular now. They take sunflowers and put them on other really pretty things. But the trend when I was growing up was everything was very... 70s gold or avocado color. Now, I didn't have quite enough to go all the way to the bottom here, so I'm going to mix up a little bit more. Just have a little bit more. Just really want to get it all painted. Use some of the paint I have left to try to Get that coverage on there. And you're going to want to dry this for the sake of time. As long as I hit it really good with the blow dryer and let it dry to touch, I can move on to the next layer. And then when we finish it, we will let it cure for 24 hours before we touch it. Just making sure that all of my main streaks are out of it and I don't have any globs of paint anywhere okay let's dry dry to touch we can move on to the next layer and now what I'm going to do is going I'm going to uh, mix a little bit of ivory and a little bit of uh, gold let me see um, I've got a little bit of vintage white and I have a little bit of well I have some antique gold and the metallic which is really really good so i'm going to take this ivory and i'm going to take some of our gold and i'm just gonna mix that in real quick Good. <clears throat> I'm going to use my stencil brush because that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take it and just um, mix and you really want to get as much paint off of here as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build up uh, the beehive. And what I noticed right away is when you're using the napkins to do your decoupage, you're not gonna be able to get super close to these legs and these wings. So I know this is gonna be a little bit white. 
and I really don't want it to be looks like it's sitting on top of this artwork I want it to look like it's blended in so I'm going to use a little bit of creativity to sort of blend in this white in here so that the B is is the thing your eye catches so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start um, here on the board and let me get a little bit more gold in here to you need to dab 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 you need to make sure you get a lot of your paint off because you don't really want and I'm just going to you know you don't want to pounce it because you'll break your canvas so I'm not really putting an enormous amount of pressure on it I'm just putting this in a a lot of different places. And you don't want to pull your stroking down because if you do, it'll look like you're painting in a straight line. I'm, re I'm really trying to create shadows and some blending. And another way that you could blend would be just to make circles but I'm really wanting some of the gold to come through. And remember, we're gonna have some trim over here on the edges, so we don't need to put it over here because it'd be a waste of paint. It's really not gonna be. Important to do that, so. I think I've got enough in here on here at this point. Now I do <laughs> put some up here because this is going to be our focal point. And I just go until I think I've covered all the areas that I really want to get where these bees are going to be hanging out. All right. So we're gonna make sure and wash your brushes as you go. Don't leave them out to dry because it'll be a really bad situation. So now we need to dry this layer and we'll go back with the hair dryer. Okay, so we're gonna take the curve iron and we're going to um, just, I'm gonna lightly go over this trim just so that it adheres to the canvas and it should be relatively smooth because we're not um, wetting it down on both sides this is what's called the what is called the heat method for decoupage and as you can tell if it's so down that if I rip it it'll just rip apart so um, these little irons are tricky unless you wrap the cord with your hand it cord pops off so I've got to wrap it okay and I'm just making sure that the napkin is adhered to the canvas here it's activating the glue which is becoming warm and then sealing it to this napkin and you just want to make sure that that your edges on the edge barely barely is down because you don't want your napkin to come up off the uh, canvas okay all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trace uh, our text and our image now uh, I could use vinyl on this with with no issue uh, it would look fine um, but I want to um, put a lot more of a homemade look to this um, I'm going to trace the the text out and then 
I'm going to put a um, honeycomb in the center maybe over here because this is where our bees are going to be. And then I'm going to... I'm going to have the text, let me turn this around so you can see it. Maybe it works better that way. So I'm going to, I'll trim more white off of this, but I'm gonna have this in the center at the top and then I'll trace our comb and then I'm gonna do the hand work for the comb in gold. And then this is gonna be black text with gold around it like you see here. So, I'm gonna use some tracing paper for that. I'm probably gonna speed up the camera because uh, no one wants to watch me trace. I'm also going to put something underneath this canvas so that when I put some pressure on it, it doesn't give way. I've gotta have something sitting in here so that I'm able to you know, take my tracing uh, stylist here and I'm able to put a little bit of pressure on it to get the carbon to go down on this canvas. It doesn't have to be dark. It just has to be light enough for me to see it so that I can follow it along. So, okay, when we come back, uh, I'll be tracing out the Okay, so I uh, finished tracing and everything and now I'm going to remove my carbons. And now comes the handwork. And I'm going to leave, I've got some cardboard under here. I'm gonna leave um, the cardboard under here so that I can do all the handwork without believing or feeling like I'm going to push through um, the canvas and don't worry about any little mistakes that you see on here we're going to touch it up um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to outline uh, the caption and then I'm going to go over the honeycomb with a gold I've got some paint pens here I think so yep my gold and I'm going to use um, this pen is a Tombow pen and I don't know the size because it's all in Asian and I or Japanese or Chinese I'm not sure but I can't read what what tip it is but it's a it's used for uh, faux calligraphy and then this is just the painter's pens that you find at Walmart. And they work okay. They just run out of paint, I think, on some projects. I've got a thin and a thick one. So um, I'll be using that as well. And first I'm gonna do my outlines so that I get a really good um, outline. And you're gonna see me, I'm gonna turn this board a thousand ways because I'm left-handed and lefties have a real hard time with smudging. And so in order to not have any smudges, I'm going to be turning this uh, and making sure that I don't do a lot of uh, smudges. So let's get going with the outline and you'll see me go all over wherever I feel that I'm gonna be able to get a clean line and I missed my cue here, so I'm gonna have to go back to this cue, I'm gonna have to just reference it. As you see, I didn't get the inside here. That's no problem. I've just gotta be able to um, get that, uh, I can eyeball it and put it in pretty well. I've got a line here at the end and I've got the line up here, so I think I can put, make that work. But uh, typically I work from the end to this side and I just do the letters that I I can tackle first and I move along. It will not make sense to most people that are right-handed. I'm just be all over the place, but hopefully the outcome will be uh, really pretty and this home decor sign. I don't think people realize how much work goes into them, but uh, it does and we love our work and we wanna obviously share it with other people. So anyway, let's get going. I'm gonna speed up the camera uh, and I'll go ahead and start outlining.
so as you can see, I've done all the outline. I've actually filled in one to see how well this pen was going to work. I'm probably going to use the black paint pen for this. Um, and I'm going to outline this honeycomb in gold first. And then I may do a black dot on top of the gold just to highlight it. And... Um, These sometimes can put out a lot of um, paint and sometimes you, there's a struggle. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to put in the gold for the, uh, I'm going to highlight the letters in gold and then we'll work on uh, where to place the B's and then any touch up work that we need to get done. I want to point out that, you know, I'm within a, f a foot of looking at this, so I'm noticing all the things I could have done better, but <clears throat> when you're tackling this type of uh, work, I think it's important to remember that when this hangs on the wall, no one really walks up to it and picks out its imperfections. They see it from about five to six feet away, if not more, and you don't really see any of this. You just um, see the overall picture. I know a lot of people, when they're working on something, you know, they get close enough to it and they see everything. Um, don't beat yourself up because majority of the time it's at a distance and you really can't notice or see any of it. So anyway, I just thought I would point that out to those who are nervous and think, oh, I could never do that. Um, you know, I think you should try. Uh, always important to, you know, um, challenge yourself and you know, <clears throat> try something different out of the box. And the worst case scenario, you could paint this entire thing a different color and start over with something else. So um, just don't try not to be afraid of, you know, projects like that. So I'm going to be flipping this around and I'll speed up the camera, but I'm going to be putting in all of the highlights for the B. So this will pop up just a little bit more off of the page.
like this and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you will try to make some home decor or if you're just not crafty at all, you can shop our website at cedarhillcountrymarket.com and you'll find home decor like this um, on our website and um, we can add more uh, things to it and make it better. We can add an exterior bow to this. This would really make um, a great sign for your kitchen or anything like that. And uh, anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. And don't forget, please find somebody to bless. And I'll see you okay, guys. So on I turned off the, the camera video. a little too quick. I forgot to make my crown. So. Here is one last look. Do you see how the bees look like they have texture? That's a purpose because that really helps bring the honeycomb to life. So anyway, I wanted to make sure and put my crown. I actually forgot to put the crown before I shut off the video. So everybody have a blessed day. Thanks for watching.